so apologies. Uh, my name is Paul Sheridan. I'm part of the technical, I'm a technical commissioning program manager. Uh, I work within Accenture Industry X. And over the last four years, I've been involved in large scale, uh, complex construction of uh, digital connected healthcare facilities. And these are some of my learnings and some of the uh, kind of key points that I've learned through my journey uh, in enabling uh, digital twins at a future date and the kind of the key elements that we need to consider at each step. So I guess the key story here is that we're almost the custodians of the digital fabric of the building. Uh, at every step, we need to have kind of the end to end vision. Uh, it's difficult at times during construction to be that kind of, you know, to look that forward ahead when, you know, it's very difficult just in terms of construction, different things need to happen at different times, commissioning of different systems, having the end to end vision and kind of clear use cases as to what you could enable at a future date are incredibly important. Um, so starting with a kind of key use case uh, could be something like the most important use case within a hospital, which is obviously the patient uh, who are number one within healthcare, obviously, um, and looking at, you know, at their most, you know, vulnerable time, what are the systems that wrap around them and what are the technologies that we can provide to ensure that their safety at all times and the best outcomes for them, their families and the surgery and uh, medical team supporting them. So within this slide, you'll start to get a bit of a look at just kind of the key building systems uh, that will be wrapped around a, a kind of any theater at any one time. Uh, these are then, there's layers above these, which we'll jump down into a diff the next slide. But just looking at the kind of key systems around there, for every single one of them, you'll see a QR code associated with them. Uh, and how can we capture all the data within the QR code? Uh, to inform uh, the kind of data structure and the naming methodology to ensure that for any single supply, any sensor that goes out of kilter, or for example, provides a, a predictive maintenance fault here, we get all the information associated with that captured and sent by a ticket. So sticking with that use case, we'll drop down to the next slide. So bear with me, it's a little bit busy, but I will talk you through it. Um, so the digital twin for us, is slightly abstract at, at the moment uh, because obviously we're just trying to test and commission hustles and, and get them open and get you know patients in and, and you know get the hospital operations up and running but if we had to start from the foundation of any kind of connected digital facility um, we look at the physical layer so you know what's incorporated and in making sure that the physical layer is open operational that starts with digital strategy design information making sure the right data strategies naming methodologies tagging uh, asset identifiers are, are all in place. Uh, so if we go back to our use case then, we can see that the predictive maintenance alert, which has been predefined as picking up an issue in the air handling unit. That then jumps up to the IoT middleware, which receives and categorizes the alarm based on the unique identifier, which has been provided. Uh, we can then look at systems integration within the IoT platform, whether that's the security systems to local, um, you know, uh, be it porters within the building that need to take action or clear spaces, there can be a whole uh, kind of series of faults from there or series of queries uh, which are created from there. Then from the IoT platform, we jump up to the IWMS layer. So this is essentially the CAFM or integrated work management layer. And this is kind of from our perspective, as far as we take it in the building at the moment from a, from a kind of facilities and construction perspective. So the IWMS generates a ticket it captures all the information it pulls down into the common data environment from below, which is all the building information. That's everything to do with the asset data, performance history, testing and commissioning data. Uh, the IWS will also have all the asset history, will have all the last time it was maintained, uh, metering data to show any anomalies associated with that piece of equipment. And we can lock all that into that QR code and kind of that unique identifier behind the um, piece of equipment. So there's a huge amount of work that we can do with kind of protecting the end digital vision uh, and the digital twin. So if we were to look at that, then we can push the information that we have brought to our layer up into the clinical systems, uh, up through the, through the connected devices to look at as anything within the theater out of its kind of temperature tolerance. Do we need to take any action? If we were to pull it up into the next level, into the SAP system, is there any type of scheduling or staff resource review that we need to undertake based on this potential issue within the theater? And then we push it right up to the electronic health record. 
So is there an impact to this theatre being taken down? If it does need to be taken down, how can we schedule that? Does it impact staff waiting list profiles? Uh, is there any other theatres that can take over within this period? So we could prob probably at this point get that far, uh, still with a lot of integration and work to do on this level. Uh, but within our current remit, we could probably get this far. The next level is the digital twin. So every foundation that we've built from here up is to get to the point of the digital twin. And it's the investment. Every single layer that you see there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, is, is based on investment in every level and investment in, in uh, not just the time and the vision in the design in retaining that. And then from the digital twin, we can do all sorts of environmental analysis, look at the space, look at the previous history of what's been uh, the maintenance history, look at the weather conditions for the coming weeks, look at health and safety compliance, look at risk, look at even, you know, uh, incoming patients, what their current uh, kind of what they're presenting with, what's the likelihood of, you know, infection. We can do all sorts of planning based on that within a digital twin, based on all the clinical systems and based on all the digital construction foundation. We can then perform go, no go theater operation analysis and inform decision making within the hospital. So, from a construction perspective, the humble beginnings, we do hope to push it and make sure and secure uh, the digital twin capabilities for the future operation of these connected uh, healthcare facilities. So that's me. Hopefully I did that in eight minutes. Um, Paul, I'm because my my question was there. Um, what platforms are you looking at for your digital twin uh, approach? Yeah, so we're using a lot of different kind of IoT platforms at the moment. So we've got Tritium Niagara in terms of the IoT platform and looking at the IBM suite for the uh, integrated work management systems. Um, we are testing and validating our digital twin use cases as we move through, and we're using Autodesk Tandem to do that just because it's the quickest and kind of easiest way for us at present to do that. Uh, we can connect the IoT data to the uh, kind of 3D BIM model and look at what kind of stuff we can generate from that. Uh, depending on the scale of the project, obviously that will be need to scaled up. Uh, but as I said, at the moment, we don't actually have a buy-in for a digital twin. So at the moment, all we can do is val validation and Autodesk Tandem is quite an agile way for us to do that. Um, Paul, coming back to you, and again, I'm going to try just to make sure we've, we've, we've got as many questions covered as possible. Um, will your digital twin have a 4D ontology to help organise the diverse data? And as a kind of uh, reciprocal question, uh, what are the top problems you find when you try to uh, correlate disparate data sources together? Um, so in terms of the 4D ontology that will be there, uh, and that's part of what we're trying to enable uh, through the process that we're looking at at the moment. Um, you know, we're always striving to try and push the data as far as we can uh, within the deliverables. Um, so fingers crossed when it does come to that point that we will be able to layer that over. Um, and the second question, sorry, Ali, was um, challenges around bringing disparate data together. Oh, yeah, uh, massive, yeah, there's huge challenges around it, uh, particularly when you've got multiple subcontractors. It, it's very difficult to try and wrangle uh, a, a centralized kind of uh, data structure. Um, but we have worked very hard with the kind of the MSIs on the project to structure that data to try and. Uh, make it uniform based on the GS1 asset naming and uh, kind of different data structures. So when we get to the next stage, which will be that uh, of kind of the data testing and running it through and for, uh, back and forward, hopefully uh, we will have kind of tried to uh, alleviate most of that. But we're not quite at that point uh, of trying to pull in too much disparate data at, at this stage. Perfect. And I think a follow up question was, um, I like the digital foundation model, um, but shouldn't include the patient in the diagram. Uh, I really like the patient, but shouldn't it include the patient in the diagram? I, I think I had the patient in the diagram in the first one. He was at the he or she was at the very center of all of the uh, uh, of the, the the workflow. So yeah, I mean anything about predictive maintenance, about ventilation within the space is all about the patient. Uh, they're the most important person in the hospital. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and uh, a specific question about uh, the use of Matterport, um, Paul. I think yeah, yeah. So we, uh, we, we 
yeah, no, within the projects that we have at the moment, we, we do have kind of 3D model capture. Uh, so obviously we have the as-built uh, building information model, um, but we also do have site captures, which are capable of scaling back through two, three years in time. Uh, and you can look at the construction as it develops. So from a maintenance perspective, that's invaluable because you can scale back and see exactly how the installation, installation was undertaken. So yeah, they, they are there.